Hallelujah. How many of you can say God's been good to me? Come on, somebody. Everybody should raise their hand. He's a good, good father. Hallelujah. Lord, we just come to you humbly but boldly to your throne of grace, Lord. We don't want to get ahead of you. Lord, I don't want another church service, Father. I, I just want an encounter with the Holy Ghost. So, Father, I just pray, Lord, that you fall down in this place. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for meeting with me, Father. Lord, help me. Sometimes when you speak to me, Lord, you're telling me things. And God, sometimes I, I think you're talking to somebody else. But you're talking to me. So, Lord, thank you for being so good to me. Thank you for hearing me. Thank you for turning the center around, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that when nobody wanted me, even I didn't want me, you still took me in. Jesus, I love you and I praise you. You're why I'm here this morning. You're why I wake up. You're why I'm not waking up in West Palm Beach prison right now, Lord. It's because of you. So, Lord, use me how you see fit. You opened the door. You set me free. You put my feet on solid rock. So, God, they don't need me. They need you just like I do. So, Father, give them all of you and none of me. Hold me in the hollows of your hands. Fill me up, Lord. Touch me from the top of my head to the soles of my feet. Thank you, Lord, for the anointing that you've given me, Father, because the anointing belongs to you. You had the anointing that breaks the yoke, Father. And I pray, Lord, today that somebody receives this word. Not tomorrow. Today. Today, a time such as this, you were moving in a mighty way. Lord, I thank you, Lord. It's in the name of Jesus in the church said. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anybody know God's good? Come on, somebody. <laughs> Hallelujah. I tell you what, we're going to do something a little bit different. If you can go ahead and open up to your Bible to Luke chapter 13 and go ahead and open it up and go ahead and get rested. Go ahead and sit down. I know we usually tell you to stand. You know, I do everything different. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I thought we'd do a little something different today, Miss pa, uh, Miss Debbie. Uh, instead of starting off like normal, I don't like doing stagnated. You know what I'm talking about? Come in and do the same old, same old. You get stagnated. Hallelujah. So I thought we'd start off first with prayer. We better, ain't we? Come on, somebody. Miss, uh, Miss Cash, we ain't going to stand today for it today. You can sit down, honey. I ain't going to do it. I'm not that preacher to leave you standing. I love you. You know what I mean? I know you was. You trust them. You know what your preacher usually does. Hallelujah. But today we're going to do a little something different. I want to tell you a joke first. Hallelujah. <laughs> How about that? I want to tell you something. This is, uh, that was this. I had a friend of mine, Derek Prokes. If you're watching, praise God for that joke, son. I'll use it to the day I die. He told me, he started telling me this story, and I want to tell you this before we get started. There was this preacher. He was going to go to church for the first time. And there was this farmer, sorry. A farmer wanted to go to church for the first time in a long time, Dave. And he said, you know, they got that new church down there. I want to go down there and see what it's like, Holly. I ain't never been. And I think the day is the day, Randall, I get dressed up and I go on to church. And the old man went into his closet and he looked through the place, Miss Lily, and he looked around and said, what do I wear in this church? He said, well, since I ain't never been there, I'm going to put my best overalls on. I ain't never been there. I'm going to put my best overalls on and get my best boots that I got out. And I'm going to wear them over there. He said, I'm going to church over here. Man went on to church and church was good and church was getting out. And the preacher walks over there to him and he said, he said, sir, I've never seen you here before. And he said, no, sir, it's my first time. He said, I just want to tell you thank you for visiting with us. We really enjoyed you coming. Uh, but I want you to do me a favor. He said, what's that? Old farmer said, what can I do for you, preacher? He said, I want you to pray. The next time you come to church, or what you should wear. He said, oh, okay, I, I'll do that. So the next week goes by. Josh, the old man, is at home, and he's trying to figure out what to wear. And the Lord told him, put on your best overalls, sir. <laughs> and put on your favorite boots, not your new polished boots. Get on your favorite boots that are worn out and fit you just right, that you're comfortable in. Put them on, son. So the old man put on his favorite boots and he put on his overalls, Pete, and he got to the church. And as he walked into the church, the preacher looked at him and didn't say anything. And after the service was over, the preacher met the old man as he was making his way out to church. And he said, I thought I told you to pray before you came back to church. He said, I sure did. He said, you did? He said, well, please explain to me. He said, I sure will. He said, I was talking to the Lord and I said, Lord. I had never been to this church, and the preacher told me to pray what I needed to wear. So, Lord, I need you to 
tell me what I need to wear to that church. And the Lord said, I don't know. I ain't never been there. <laughs> Come on, somebody. If you love Jesus, shout Jesus in this church. <laughs> Hallelujah. I got good Holy Ghost news for you. Kingdom Church, when we walk in this building, the Lord comes in it. If we walk out of this building and walk into another building, which we will real soon, and when that happens, the Holy Ghost follows us where we go. You hear me? Everywhere our feet go, the Lord goes. Somebody shout Jesus in this church. Hallelujah. Well, I won't make you wait till the end. We got approved for the church. Praise God. The next two weeks we'll be out of this building in two hours. Somebody shout Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord gave me a message this morning. There's a time such as this. That's why they woke me up to a time such as this. And I said, a time such as this. Because I know I've been preaching a while. And most of the time when I preach, either I live it, I'm going in it, or I'm going through it. Come on, somebody. And when the Lord says, now is the time, not tomorrow. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of healing. Today is the day that change break loose. Today is the day. Not tomorrow. He said today. If you believe that and receive that, somebody shout Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah. If you got your Bibles, look with me. Chapter 13 of Luke. Let's get into this word. Luke chapter 13, beginning in verse 10. We're going to read 10 through 13. Amen. I'll hold up. I hear them pages. I'll wait. Don't let, don't let a preacher get ahead of you. You make sure you're there. Don't, don't, don't be embarrassed. Don't be that one in the back going, I ain't going to flip my pages because I don't want nobody to see. I'll let them know real quick. Hold on now. Don't leave me, preacher. I'm going with you. I, got, I want my ticket, Miss Debbie. I'm going with the Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody know what I'm talking about? Chapter 13, Luke. And the Bible reads, now he was teaching in one of the synagogues that he is Jesus. Now Jesus is teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. They have gathered for Sunday church. And on the light, the word came to give the word. My gracious almighty. Uh, some of you didn't get it. Let me give you the word. Jesus is the word, and he came to church to give the word. Hallelujah. That's what I'm talking about. Now y'all got it. Hallelujah. Now, Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath. So Jesus is now filling in for the preacher. I mean, what a, what a fill-in. Come on, somebody. I sit down any day. Come on in, Jesus, and have your way. I will lay down at your feet. I'm not the preacher. You the preacher, and I need everything you got. Somebody know what I'm talking about. Praise his name. Jesus is preaching in the church on Sunday, verse 11. And behold, there was a woman who had a spirit of infirmity for 18 years and was bent over and could in no way raise herself up. She had been coming to church for 18 years. 18 years praying, fasting. Waiting on the Lord, believing in the Lord. I mean, I can just want to, I just would love to have seen her face when she walked in and Jesus was standing behind the pulpit. I don't know the day some change. Come on, somebody. I got rid of that preacher and the priest is in. I said, Jesus is in. Somebody know what I'm talking about. I got good Holy Ghost news. I brought him with me. Somebody should get excited about that. Come on, somebody. But when you really start living the way you want to be living in the Lord, you should say, Preacher, he came with me too. Come on, somebody. He didn't just come with you. He rode with me. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Don't let that preacher steal your thunder. You tell him he rode with me. Praise God. She had been coming to church for 18 years, and the Bible says she had the spirit of infirmity. Still coming to church, still searching, still seeking. And the Bible says she was bent over, sis, where she can't even look up. Life has a way of beating you down, making you look down, don't it? Mm, come on, somebody. And I love this. Jesus didn't know he didn't have to preach some more of the sermon. He didn't have to continue to look churchy. Watch my Jesus. But when Jesus saw her, Woo, I can stop right there and end it. But when Jesus saw her, he said, she's in need of a savior. She's been coming for 18 years looking for a breakthrough. She's been praying every night and she thinks that I don't hear her. Today is the day, not tomorrow. Today is the day, a time such as this. Today the king is in. Come on, somebody needs to hear me. 
Woo, hallelujah. But when Jesus saw her, he called her. My gracious. When Jesus saw her, he called her. That's a whole nother sermon right there, Randall. I'm going to leave it alone, but I was going somewhere with it. It sure was. But when Jesus saw her, he called her and said to her, Woman, you are loosened from your infirmity. What I loved about this story that most people don't pick up on is Miss Debbie, the woman, never opened her mouth in the church. She never came in and said, I got a prayer request. I've been coming to your stinking church for 18 years. And I've been praying and I ain't got a breakthrough. Pete, she didn't say a word. You can pray so long that you prayed out. Can I talk to somebody? Woo! But she said, where else can I go? If I'm going to get a breakthrough, if a change is going to come, if I'm going to run into him, I better run to his people and to his house and into his presence. I got to get to where Jesus is. But why, woman, why? 18 years ain't that long enough of believing? Some of you here today can believe for 18 days and you don't see God move. You quit and don't have no belief no more. I've been believing for 30 days that God was going to change something. I woke up and read my devotion for 30 days. But God ain't moved. 18 days, we ready to quit. Talking about a fast, we ride by and smell a chicken nugget ready to turn in. Can't even contain ourselves. 18 years. This woman not just walked in the church, Jeremy, with her head up. She had to walk in the church with her head down, David. You're supposed to walk in the church and be blessed and highly favored. The head and not the tail. Can I talk to somebody? What happens when you walk into church and you feel like the tail? And you come dragging and you can't even hold your head up because life's done beat you down so much that the Bible says she couldn't even raise up. There's just something happens, Brittany, when you read it. Meet a risen king. He has a way of raising you up. From the prison to the pulpit. He has a way of raising you up from the crack house to the hope house. I don't know who I'm talking to, but the very thing you've been praying for, the Lord has brought it in this building. And if you will believe it today, you will receive it today. But what I have noticed, a lot of us believe until we don't see. And we say, whatever, we got faith. I came to talk to you. Because there's a story in the word of God that reminds me of God's church. And I, I'll put myself there because I've been there. Not just you. Anything I tell you, I've done ten times worse. So don't ever let that devil lie to you and say, preacher's always messing with us. Now nah, he's really preaching at himself. Understand that. There's a story where Jesus cursed the fig tree. Anybody know that story? For the ones that may don't, I'm on just the ones that do entertain me. Jesus is walking with his disciples. We're going somewhere with this. Stay with me. He's got his disciples with him, and they're walking. And Jesus is hungry. And he sees a fig tree. Everything Jesus does is to teach you. He never woke up and said, wow, folks, I didn't see that coming. He always knows exactly what's on the road. He knows how long the road is. Jeremy, he knows when the storm will come and he knows when it'll end. He understands where he's going. And Jesus is walking with his men, Randall, and he does something. I'm talking about we're walking with Jesus here. They, the man that brings manna from the ground, the one that can take bread and keep most. You shouldn't never be hungry. You can turn rocks into bread if you choose. How are you hungry? That would have caught my attention right off top. So I would like to think, Sarah, that when he said those words, I was thinking, here's a teaching lesson. But I probably would have been like the disciples. I know y'all don't want to talk about that, but I, I put myself with Peter all the time. And I can see myself walking with them in, and then Jesus is walking, and he sees, I'm taking it somewhere, and he sees a fig tree, Jason, and he says, I'm hungry. And he walks over to the fig tree, and the fig tree don't have no figs on it. Well, truthfully, the fig tree ain't even supposed to have figs because it ain't even a season for figs. Jesus made the seasons. Listen to me. He knew, Sarah, there were no figs 
on that tree when he was walking toward the tree. But to amuse the men around him and to teach them, I'm going to walk over here and teach them something. Now, I told you, there was a woman with the infirmity for 18 years. And she kept coming to church. Kept coming. Why? Nothing's changing. You're believing. You're not receiving. You're praying, but nothing's moving. Woman, 18 years. Why does she come? Watch. For this lesson that God put in the Bible about a fig tree. Because when the men saw the fig tree, they heard Jesus. They heard the voice of God speak words before that said, get up. And cripple man, get up. They'd been with the same voice that when a storm broke out on the sea, hush be still. Even the wind and the waves obey. They've been with Jesus when he's walking down the road and now mama's trying to bury her son and Jesus taps on the casket. Get up. They heard him talk. And when Jesus said something, my God, Randall, it got done. And as Jesus said, the strongholds are breaking, they break. Only thing these men knew is when my daddy speaks, things move. Things shift. Things change. Then Jesus showed them something. That he taught a woman with 18 years of problems. Watch. He said, I curse this fig tree, you die. Jesus just walks home. The men are standing dumbfound, David, going. Maybe he lost his power. Maybe something happened because when Jesus speaks, the dead get up. When Jesus speaks, the cripple begins to walk. When Jesus speaks, the deaf ear begins to hear. When Jesus speaks, the blind see. Why is this fig tree still alive? My daddy spoke to it and cursed it and said, Die, so how are you alive? Did my daddy lose his power? Did my daddy forget me? Did he forget what's going on here? This is what happened to these disciples. Because all they had ever seen, Brenda, is when Jesus speaks, things move. When Jesus speaks, devils leave. So why are you still green? Why are you still alive and vibrant? Some of you get reports of cancer. Reports come in. Bad reports. Watch. Jesus says, I curse you, you die. He leaves. They all scratching their head, Jeremy. But you got to have that 18-year-old willow woman in your blood to get this. They walking down the road. What happened with Jesus, man? Did you see that, homeboy? I didn't see. I mean, Jesus spoke to the fig tree, and it did not die. That's the same man that made the blind see. How is it still alive? The next day, they come walking, and they run up on this fig tree. And the men go, hey, Jesus, check this out. Yesterday, you talked to that tree, you remember? You ever tell a man to talk to a tree? Come on, somebody. <laughs> I heard you speak to the tree. And I, I thought the tree didn't listen because yesterday it was green. And today is dead. See, Jesus was teaching them something that he talked to that, that woman with 18 years of affirmity. It ain't what you see. It's what you know. It's what you know. And when Jesus was teaching these men, when my word goes forth, see, the widow got it. The woman with the issue for 18 years, she already knew. The day that I prayed, the day that I called on the heaven, the day that I called on my Savior, the day that I called on Jesus, he heard me. His word does not return void. I am his child. He knows my need before I even ask him. I ain't in this condition. My soul is fine. My spirit is fine. That outer appearance is dying, but the Lord is on the way. She kept coming into the house of God, waiting on God's word to be fulfilled. The one thing she did that we can never do Stop believing. 
she believed. If I can just stay in the house, something's going to come in and change it. I, it might be 18 years, but there's a breakthrough coming. I, I still got to get to church. Why are you going to go today? I mean, every, we've been going 17 years, Mama. This year is the year of Jubilee. Get in the truck. Let's go. Can you see her? Going to the church house. Pulling up. The Lord's going to move. He's going to heal me. Who's that new preacher? Who's he? Mama, there's a new preacher. Can you see him walking in with her? Mama can't even see no more because Mama, she can't raise up no more. She's been down so long. Who is he, son? I don't know. He looks something different about him. I told you the day's the day. Yeah, my mom, you say that every week. Come on, sit down, my mom. See, that's some of your problem because you can't believe, you can't receive. The Bible says in order for you to receive, you must believe. When you stop believing, you won't receive anything from the Lord. And can I tell you, the devil will throw everything in a toolbox at you to make you not believe. See, when the men seen the tree, Brittany, they seen green leaves. But there was something going on up under the roots. Because God is a root killer, not a branch killer. He's going to destroy it. He's going to kill it all. He don't want to cut something off. See, God don't halfway heal you. He don't halfway heal you. Somebody needs to hear me. He don't halfway get you off of drugs. He don't halfway break the yoke. If God done it, then it's done. Jesus said, I have already spoke to that. And can you, I can only imagine David then walking around. Can you come and look? It died. Jesus going, I know it's dead. <laughs> I knew that yesterday when I spoke to it. Because when my word goes forth, it goes up underneath the soil. And it killed the root. And even though you couldn't see it yet. Because the only time we can see something is when we believe something. Because we got to see it to believe it. And the Lord said, it ain't what you see. You got to know it within you. Woo, somebody needs to hear this today. Mm. See, the woman understood 18 years ago when she started praying that God cut off the sword that come against her. She understood 18 years ago the very thing that was holding her back was cut off. She understood that the time was limited. She didn't know the hour, nor the date, nor the time. But one thing she knew is that the word wouldn't return void. And that her God was a God that said yes and amen. And he heard her prayers. Mm. I would have probably been like the disciples. Well, the leaves are still green. Lord, they say the leaves are green. They're still alive. The Lord saying it's under the root. I'm going underneath. I wonder what God's trying to go underneath in your life with. But you just can't believe it. Because the devil can sometimes hit you so hard, he'll have you look down. And you look down so long, Dave. You'll stay down. He'll let you disqualify yourself because you look down so long. I can only see my daddy doing this, grabbing him by the chin, David. I'm up here. Don't ever look down there. You loose woman. She didn't even ask for it, but God said, I know the need before you even asked. I see your hurts. I see your pains. I see your tears. But what I want to see is your consistency to, that you believe enough that you cannot back off, that you cannot run. That only place you run to is toward the cross. And Jesus sees her faithfulness. And the Lord says today, we got a different church service. What we're doing to DJ, he says, we're going to go out and heal some blind people. Today I'm going to church to preach. It's hard to be interested. We're going to get kicked out today. Let's go. Everywhere Jesus went, he'd turn it up. Come on, somebody. He had a way. He'd make some devils run quick. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Hallelujah. I don't want to get ahead of myself. I want you to hear this. This is in Psalms 75. It says, for God says, listen, for God says, I will break the strength of the wicked. Have you ever looked at wicked people sometimes and say, man, y'all get blessed every angle I turn around? I mean, you devil, you, you more blessed than anybody that I know. Y'all ain't the only one. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I'm trying to live right, trying to do right. And my God, he's out here doing this and doing that. And blessed and highly favored. Lord, where you at? You ain't never done that. I'll live long enough. You'll run into it. 
For God says, I will break the strength of the wicked, but I will increase the power of the godly. He said, I will cut off the very thing that has come against you and everything that's weakened you, I used it to strengthen you. Listen to what he's saying. The very thing that has come against you, I have already cut it off, woman. You're already loosened when you walked into my house and when my eyes got upon you. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day. Come on, somebody. Not tomorrow, but today is the day of healing. Mm, The day is the day the Lord made. Somebody shout Jesus. Somebody needs to hear this. It may look like sometimes when you pray that nothing's going on. And it may seem like the more harder you pray, the more hell breaks loose. But I assure you, the moment you prayed, the word was sent forth to cut the root off. This is no surprise, remember Daniel? I prayed for 21 days, Jesus, and I've been fasting. Where are you? The Bible says the angel of the Lord came in there with Daniel and said, I heard heard you pray the first time you prayed. I know it seems like a long time ago. I know you hurt, and I know you've had tears, and I know you had questions. But something inside of you, Daniel, says I refuse not to believe. He's all I got. He's where my help comes from. If I don't got hope in Jesus, then I have no hope. I will believe and stand and wait upon the Lord. David, I mean, Daniel waited so long that if you read your Bible and study it out, Daniel was in 21 days of waiting on God to move. 21 days. I'm talking 18 years, honey. David, Daniel was in the place for 21 days, but he ain't had no food, no nothing to eat. He weak. I go a week without food. I don't even know if I can go four days without chicken nugget. He laying on the ground. Barely hold his head up now, David. Still believing. You ever had sickness take over your body? And you prayed that you'd be healed the next morning. And five days went by around and you were still coughing up a lung and wondering if you was going to get out of this one. Many of you have faced trials and tribulations. We see things knock on our doors, on our family's doors. We see 18 years of infirmity. We see eight months of suffering with cancer. My son told me this morning this little child was born, baby born with leukemia. Stage four, born with it. And we say, God, why don't you let this happen? The Bible says that it lets it rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. God says he can give it, he can take it. Do you trust him when he takes it? Do you still believe he's good when he takes something good from you? Miss Debbie, you could have had a chance to be mad at God when he took your husband. But you knew better. Anybody else lost a loved one in this church? Happens, don't it? Does that mean God's not good? He's still good, ain't he? Somebody shout Jesus. I came by here today to tell tell somebody in this church that God is going to cut off the very thing that's held you back. The very thing you've been waiting on, God is in this building today and he's going to cut it off. The very thing you've been believing for. If you can believe just a little bit more. If you can push a little bit more. Do you know the worst pains for a woman is right when the child begins to crown? What does the doctor say? Push! One more time! God brought me by here to tell you he's birthing something in you. And the baby is crowning. And you want to stop because the pain. You want to stop because this infirmity has went on way too long. You want it to get over with. You want it to end. The Lord told me to stop by here before I go to heaven to tell somebody today if you will push. If you will push one more time. She had to go to church one more time. 
18 years, a lot of time. A lot of time. You know what? I think I'm going to stay home. It's raining. I bet it rained that day. I can't prove it. <laughs> Wouldn't you say? Wouldn't, how many of you know what I'm talking about? I bet you it rained that day, and I bet it was storming. I bet it was so bad, Miss Potter, that he didn't even, that he didn't, she didn't even want to go get in the car. I said, ain't no car. We got to walk. So we're going to have to walk to church in the rain? It's the same old preacher. I've been there 18 years. He's laid hands on me. I don't know how many times. I'm still not healed. The Lord said, one more time, can you, can you believe? One more time. I need you to come to church. One more time. I need you to push. One more time. I need you to believe. One more time. Who am I talking to in this church? God is telling somebody in this church right now, you need to believe one more time. You need to push one more time. The help is on the way. He is your very help in the time of trouble. He is in this building, and he wants to set you free. Whatever you've been, everybody stand to your feet. Let's have church. Come on, somebody. If you've been in this church today, and you've been struggling, can I see some hands? Can we have real church? Let's not just do church, churchy that they do. Sick of that. Let's have church like the disciples did. They get excited. Running through the street. But I know a man. He's in the building. He's here today. I know you've had cancer. I know you had lies. The devil's told you that you would never make it. I know the devil said your, your home will never be back together. I know the devil told you he's divided your house. Destroyed your marriage. Your kids will never get off drugs. Somebody needs to hear me. And the Lord is saying, push. Pray until something changes. God is able. My question today, have we let a devil sneak in? Because we ain't seen it in 18 days. We stopped believing. I come in this church this morning. I've been tested and I've been pressed. Right now I don't got nowhere else to go. He's all I got. And I've learned in a place of desolate in the wilderness. That's when my daddy comes. He comes when nobody else will come. He'll show up when nobody else shows up. And he'll never leave me nor forsake me. Time I was sitting in prison and the Lord said, can you push for one more time? Lord, I look foolish telling them you're coming to get me. The door remains locked. It ain't what you see, son. I got the keys to hell and I'll open that door if you can believe. I don't know who I'm talking to, but somebody in this church needs to believe today. You need to believe that the Lord is in this place right now and he wants to do something in with you. And right now you're crowning and you want to quit because pain has struck your body. The, the devil has lied to you. Doubt has come in. But God is in this place right now and reminding you. She come into church one more time. I don't know who I'm talking to. Everybody here needs something from God. Is anybody, is, wanting, is anybody asking God for anything in this building? Breakthrough in your finances, a breakthrough in healing, whatever it is, God is in this building right now. I'm asking you to push one more time. I'm asking you to pray one more time for that one you said, he can't never quit drinking. I need you to pray one more time for the one you said he'll never get off them drugs. I need you to pray one more time and say, God's got my household. You got a lost loved one. Everybody in this house has a lost loved one. I'm asking you, church, as a corporate, will you pray one more time? Will you pray one more time that Johnny is getting broke free? Can you pray one more time he won't go back to prison? Can you pray one more time that the house will stand? Can you pray one more time that the marriage will last another hundred years? Can you pray? One more time. Push, church. Come on. Everybody here under the sound of my voice. I don't care who you are in this building. Everybody needs to push right now. I need you to pray right now. If you, if you got it all together in a box of chocolate, you don't need to pray. Pray for me. So glad. But there's somebody in your family 
that wants to get off drugs but they don't know how to they want to be free but they don't know how to be free where if the secret was you push today and God say I need you to push I need you to pray one more time Yeah.